All right, Knights of Apollo, what's up, guys? It's Apollo here, and yes, we are finally back with another medieval battle. I know it's been a very long time, but we are playing Medieval Kingdoms Total War 1212 AD, the mod for Total War Attila. Now, this is not a historical battle, but it's set in a historical setting, the Hussite Wars, or also known as the Bohemian Wars or the Hussite Revolution. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know much about this topic, okay? So, the more I talk about it, the dumber I'm going to sound. So, I'm not going to talk much about it. I will give you a general overview. Uh, it, it seems to be a religious conflict uh, between the moderate Hussites, the Catholics, versus the radical Hussites. Uh, the conflict started July 30th, 1419, and ended May 30th, 1434. And what really stood out to me about the Hussite Wars is that if, well, let me explain it this way. Are you a fan of Kingdom Come Deliverance? Because it's actually the same setting with similar characters. It's really, really cool to play uh, two games on the same subject matter, if you get what I'm saying. So you guys know Sigismund. Well, Sigismund is involved with this war. Uh, of course, he's the one who locked up his brother in Kingdom Come and in history. This actually happened. Uh, but this actually takes place... 16 years after the raid of Scalitz. If you remember playing Henry, you know, he's he's helping his blacksmith dad and they get attacked by, you know, the Hungarians. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. It's pretty cool. And uh, it's just really awesome to kind of experience, like I said earlier, the same subject matter, but with two different games. You kind of get a different you get the RPG first person experience and then you get the grand epic battle experience. I don't know. That's just really awesome to me and really cool. Uh, so yeah, we're going to see an epic battle and it's a quick battle, but it's a cool one. We've got some war wagons that we're going to see in action, which I'm really excited about. Now I do have some quick announcements I want to share with you guys. I know I'm, this intro is taking a long time, but this is really important to me. The first one is about the mod 1212 AD. I heard a rumor. I can't confirm for sure uh, it's a rumor and if you work on this mod maybe you can confirm it in the comments or something or just let me know but I heard that they actually fixed the deployment bug and if you don't know what that is essentially what happens is when you play a battle and then deploy your troops and then save the battle when you go to watch that replay it crashes the game completely well, I heard that they figured out what was the something with banners like banners were causing it So I heard they know how to fix it in the next patch. It's gonna be fixed So when we play this we don't have to worry about not deploying because what you had to do is just start the battle instantly Then deploy during the battle time. Well now we can just deploy and play the battle and if that's the case I'm gonna be streaming the hell out of this game because that was one of the major reasons why I didn't play it is because of that bug and having people to not deploy you know it's just it was a headache so I'm really excited about that and the final thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is YouTube members first off I want to give a big thank you to all of my current YouTube members we're almost at 300 which is insane that's an insane amount of people supporting me and i am very grateful also big thank you to all of those who have used super chat during my streams that has been a huge help honestly it's been a huge help and i am very very grateful for your for your support um at this point in terms of my entire revenue with doing youtube because i do do this for a job this is how i pay the bills and again another thing i'm just super grateful to be able to do this for a living it's been a blessing it, it really has um, but right now 17 to 20 percent that's a huge percent of my revenue is from memberships and super chat that is a huge chunk and what's really crazy is that lately my views have been going down but I've been doing more games that I love and I'm having a lot more fun but my revenue is staying the same thanks to YouTube members and Super Chat. So I cannot thank you guys enough for supporting my channel. It has been something that's been really fun like streaming has been really fun. Uh, people have been really supportive. And that's just amazing. So those of you who are not members, 
I just want to say like how helpful it is. It really does help me out a ton. And I just want to quickly talk about it because maybe you, you haven't heard of it or maybe you don't know what it's about. But basically, you can support my channel with the monthly payment, but you do get some stuff out in return. So there's three different tiers. There's a dollar ninety nine, which you'll get a really cool badge next to your name. I made a little PA shield, which uh, levels up basically the longer you you support me you get different shields and it kind of shows your status but you'll also get access to the member only chat for the YouTube community and on my Discord, just make sure you link your uh, YouTube with your your um, Discord. So you can get access to a member-only chat on my Knights of Apollo Discord. Uh, my second tier is a $4.99. Uh, you will get access to a members-only playthrough, which I'm going to be I'm going to be doing Three Kingdoms here pretty soon. There's a new DLC that's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll try to upload that about once or twice a week. So yeah, that's I I thought that was pretty cool. And then finally, I. Have have the king tier which is a $24.99 where your name is going to be added to the description of my videos as a bit of a credit or thank you message uh, so yeah pretty cool stuff again guys you know if you can't support me that's totally fine too just leaving a comment leaving a like that is ton of help right there I you know I just want to make that clear I don't want to pressure anyone to, to become a member if they feel like they can't please just you know leaving comments watching the videos that's plenty that that is that will do wonders uh, but I just want to kind of give that a shout out just in case to those of you um, who have not heard of YouTube memberships and I just want to express how how helpful it is it's it really has been really cool to see that hey I can do more stuff that I enjoy and not get hurt from it because I have to like, you know, do all these like crazy thumbnails and titles and I got to do these certain games. I can go out and have more fun. Anyways, I, I hope I'm not taking too long. So we'll dive into this battle, guys. And uh, let me just show you the factions really quick. So on one side, we do have Poland, which is uh, they were on the side of the Huzites. And then we have Bohemia. Now, there is a famous general who is in these wars, which he is right here. Now I'm gonna try to pronounce, look at him, a silver fox. I can only hope to look like this man when I'm uh, when I'm older, except having two eyes. Though having a little bit of an eye patch is kind of BA. But uh, it's Jan, Jan Zika. I don't, Z, Zizka? I don't know if I, I'm probably slaughtering that name, but yeah, famous, famous general at the time. So who are they taking on? Well, they're taking on, of course, the Teutonic Order and the Papal States, because they are a bit of a crusade against these guys. So let's go ahead and press play and get this one underway. I think they're still kind of setting up their troops a little bit. Um, if we want to just really quickly zoom in and check out some of these uh, units that they got here. So we got some spearmen in the front, which I have no idea how to pronounce it. The officers look amazing. Look at that, the Bohemian officers, light spear infantry. There we go. They've been given the command to move forward. We also got some sergeants in the back. These brave men fighting for their religious freedoms, essentially. Uh, something worth fighting for. But they've got their troops, uh, a small section of force. So it's kind of the, the way they're laying this out. They've got a small force on this left, but they've got a nice defensive force near the wagons. In the center, it's kind of the same thing, a stretched out line. And then we've got Poland, who's who's kind of clumping on this other right flank, which makes sense because the two uh, Christian or Catholic factions have kind of split. They're not even going towards the center. They've split in two sides, and now things are going to get spicy. Now, of course, we have Bohemia taking on the Teutonic Order. Um, they're starting to form up. Now, I would be a little bit afraid of these Ritterbruder which I never pronounce correctly. Uh, it's a heavy shot cav. The Teutonic Order has some scary cav that you gotta be careful of. Uh, now, of course, Bohemian cav is no joke either. And also, they got a lot of infantry support nearby. Even the Huzite flailmen. Look at that. They got the common rabble. Women are in the ranks fighting for what they believe in. Very cool. And now we also have some dog heads. More Huzite forces. Kind of shifting around. A little laggy. I'm not sure why it's so laggy. Uh, over here. I, oh, artillery is now opening fire. And they are going after the Huzite war wagons. There's a unit of spear levy kind of protecting them. Now they're going to move up. So, yeah, he's got like one unit right in front of the Huzite war wagons. 
I assume to protect it against like infantry. Now the war wagons can hold for a long time against infantry, but I think this is just another extra layer of defense that will keep the wagons running as long as possible. Okay, so they're kind of forming up. Still nothing yet. We're about two minutes into the battle. It seems like both sides are just kind of sizing each other up, trying to see a weakness. And I think finally we're gonna get we're gonna get a little bit of a engagement. Mounted crossbowmen. No, they just moved up a little bit. Let's go back to that artillery. Is it still firing? Oh, this is oh, he's got a culverine. This is not like a I, for some reason I was thinking it's like a catapult, but let's see. Let's watch this thing fire. I think they also added trebuchet in this game as well. They used the models from Three Kingdoms, uh, which they have some pretty cool looking trebuchet. No, they're not opening fire. Now there's battle music going on right now, but it must just be skirmishers. Yep, skirmishers are opening fire. We've got these uh, medium bow infantry from the Papal States just letting loose as many arrows as possible. And they're trying to focus down the Lithuanian archers who are now moving up along with the spears who are kind of probably going to protect them from possible uh, cab charges. This is awesome. Look at that. Look at the war wagons in the back there. The levy spearmen ready to hold. Uh oh, ally under attack. Okay, yeah, it's just the skirmishing. So just a lot of intense skirmishing. The armies are red line to red line. We've got these deadly German men at arms. And here we go. They've been given the order to charge. Let's go ahead and follow them a little bit. Oh no, they're just moving up. Okay, I'm just so I'm look, I'm ready for a charge, man. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for these armies to go in and get nasty. Alright, go in and get nasty. Let's see this. Uh, back over here. We've got actually the war dogs here kind of in the front. So I wonder if they're gonna rely on these these dog heads to try to uh, you know, do some damage. Music is uh, from Medieval 2, and they actually, yes, they do release the war dogs, and they are going full speed here. And they are going to get these archers. They're going to chew up these archers. And they're going to send up some support there. Prussian raiders awkwardly throwing their skirmishing. Uh, they're like jabbies. You see that? That was really awkward, but they're actually causing, look at this, they're causing these bowmen to break. That's a, that's a huge win for the Huzzite forces. And now the Teutonic Order is charging in their cav as well. We've got another, another wave of dogs going in after these archers. But instead they're gonna face the spearmen, which they're not gonna do as well. Uh, because obviously dogs are a bit more of a support unit. So the spearmen are going to try to hold against these dogs. It's a pretty cool fight here. Look at this. The dogs. Right? Look at this guy in this sweet armor. He's like, ah, back, you beast. You heathen dog. Now the archers are shooting down the masters who just released their, their war dogs, those poor dogs. Back over this way. Huge fight. Look at this. We've got knights going at it. Heavy shock cav got these heavy shock infantry oh yeah getting nasty uh, over on this side we've got a nice clash of infantry spears versus some heavy shock infantry Men are running, cowards. and then back over here we've got the fight still going on spear versus spear we got a little cab v cab it's getting real medieval over here got the armored knights going at it with some spear support it's getting dirty it's getting nasty and uh I don't know why I keep saying that, but it's just funny to me. There's a lot of breaking going on from this side, though. Lots of wavering coming from Poland. They've got to try to hold here against the Papal States. And But the war wagons are about to come into play, though. They're not quite firing. But they, they're they definitely going to be a position of, like, a fallback position. Let's go back over here. Let's see how this battle is progressing. It's a little messy over here as well. Two tonic knights are moving in. We got the dog heads, uh, the masters of the uh, the war dogs fighting for their lives. We have uh, the Huzzite light cab trying to hold back the two tonic order, the Ritter brother, Ritter brother, but it's not going well. It is not going well, and they are just slamming this uh, this left side. And it looks like this whole 
war dog strategy i mean it did a little damage right it killed a couple archers but i don't know if it was worth it i don't know if it was worth it but now we've got infantry kind of shifting over archers swordsmen shifting over um, they were able to break a couple units here at least get them into breaking got the uh, skirmish cab just kind of holding back i'm sure they're going to open fire soon but yeah, this entire flank has kind of been contained by the Teutonic Order. Let's go back over to this side where it's getting really juicy. Complete opposite style of battle. We got some pikemen, medium pikemen who are pushing against these levy spearmen. This is a tough situation for Poland with their war wagons. Enemy units have returned to the battle. So a nice little front line. We have, we have calves cycling through. Look at this formation right here. Some uh, light pull-arm infantry maneuvering over, trying to reinforce a big push. Look at this. Three units clumped up here of some very heavily armored infantry trying to slice through the Papal States. Trying to cut through them with sheer force. Oh, man. I love medieval battles. There's something about it. There's something about... Grown men being in full suited, just metal armor, you know? Just all the metal armor and the axes and the weapons. It's just such a fascinating time. But here we go. Papal states are starting to break here a little bit, along, as well as the Polish are starting to break. Now, uh, the Papal states were able to contain and kind of win this area over here, which is going to free up some of their cav and infantry. The general is now getting focused down by the archers. He's having to fall back. Let's see, where is he? I assume he has a crown. It's the king's bodyguard, but I don't see him. Oh, wait, there he is. There he is. Yeah, there's that crown. Look at that. That is a glorious helmet. That is a sick helmet. But the Polish king is kind of reforming. He's watching his men kind of break and discuss. Um, but he's still holding. This side of the army is still holding. You can see he's kind of holding on to the flank here with his light pull arm unit protecting the flank of the main line. But oh my god, they've got the heavy axemen. Late period are starting to break. And look at this. Just like metal clashing. Just, you know, shields bashing, swords slashing. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but uh, it's quite the fight over here. This is going to be a tough situation for Poland with these pikemen. Over here, he's got a swordsman unit in reserve. Let's go ahead and go to the other side of the battle where things are really picking up over on this front where infantry is now being thrown into the fight, but it still seems like Bohemia is just kind of sending in the lesser of troops. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, I haven't really seen too high skill. We got some sergeants here, which are pretty solid, but we're not seeing the, like, heavily armored units go in just yet. I think he's saving them for kind of the last stand near the, uh, the war wagons. It's really laggy, but uh, I don't know why it's so stuttery like this. I, that is just 12-12. It's a pretty heavy mod. It's a lot. Uh, but the Teutonic Order is one in this flank. Now going to do a bit of a hammer and anvil right in the back of these sergeant, the sergeants. And that's going to cause them to break very quickly. Very, very quickly. There we go. This center has shattered. The enemy general is dead. No way. The Papal State... No, that's, that's the King of Poland is dead. He fights with his men. He has fallen... That's going to cause a huge rout of his forces. His last stand is underway. There we go. The war wagons are opening fire. You can see them. That's so cool. They're starting to open fire. It's up to these archers trying to skirmish down these forces. Look at this. A huge amount of forces pushing up. And they're trying. They're doing their best. Like a stand. Hold your ground. They might actually do a lot of damage. I think it's even caused them to kind of fall back a little bit. Because this is not going to be easy to take out. Back over this way. Look at this. Huge clash of infantry. Pavi Spearman uh, versus the Teutonic um, Sal Sam Lander, Sam Lander Swordsman. So a medium melee infantry. A nice, uh, nice line battle going on. It looks like, looks like Bohemia is holding pretty well over on this side but over on this front uh oh the war wagons are starting to break here they're wavering 
So they do crumble pretty quickly to the sight of infantry getting too close. That's not good. I mean, Bohemia really needs to hold here against the Teutonic Order. I mean, look at this wave of forces pushing in on their flank. And the war wagons, I don't, they're already breaking? At the first sign of if enemy infantry? Yeah, I think they stopped firing. Oh, I think they've, yeah, they're, they're routing. They're routing. This war wagon did nothing, nothing. I mean, maybe they got a couple shots. Hang on, let me let me see how many kills they have. Uh, two? They got two kills? Oh dear, that's gotta be disheartening. As Bohemia now holds against the wave of Teutonic forces that just seem unstoppable. Another clash of forces there. More infantry clashing in against these. Uh, let's see, what is this? Halberdiers with. Uh, Look at that. Look at these weapons. Oh my god. Medium polearm infantry. Pretty nasty. Holding. Trying to hold. They're charging now over here. They're going to go for these skirmishers. But the Huzite uh, Flailman. Not a bad uh, unit versus unit. Pretty even match here, right? Yeah, combat even. So awesome, look at this. Okay, let's go ahead and do some slow motion here. Uh, this front line is really struggling to hold. Uh, they've got just so many Teutonic forces pushing on their flank. Over on this side though, we're getting a huge waiver. Look at this, multiple units wavering against the Pavi Spearmen of Bohemia. So if they can quickly win over here and shift the reinforcements to support this flank, they just might be able to hold against the Teutonic Order, but it's a time game. They've got to hurry up and beat them. Now over on this side, oh boy. Now the war wagons are still intact. These war wagons have gotten 14 kills, right? Um, but their infantry for Poland is pretty much destroyed. It's up to these archers to try to win for Poland. We also have some gunners. And they're kind of just kiting down the Papal States. They're kiting them down, slowing them down as much as possible, so by the time they get to the flank of his ally, um, or the, the, the Papal States enemy, words are hard, they're gonna be a little bit weaker. Well, let's see what Poland can do here. You're never out of the game until you're out of units. You'll be surprised what you can do with one unit, two units, that kind of stuff. Look at that, they're just shredding, shredding this force. Is it gonna be enough though? Let's see if they can get another volley. I don't think they can. They're most likely, yeah, they're gonna just charge in. Charge in, give them hell. The rest of the forces are doing the same against these archers. I would try to kite the archers a little bit, but he's, gonna, he's about to get charged in the rear as well, yeah. He's got this light, medium melee. Yeah, they're closing in. And it's up to these archers. They're gonna try to slow down. The balance of power is dead even, guys. But Poland's going to try to slow down this Papal State army that's pretty much victorious at this point from getting on the flank of his ally. Oh my god, this is such a cool battle scene. Look at, look at those war wagons standing their ground. Alright, so the war wagons are pretty much done. They end up with <laughs> 21 kills. Uh, let's go back this way where the Teutonic Order is wavering, but they're not breaking yet. And they're down to 100 men over here. Okay, they still have a lot of men. But they need to hurry up. They gotta hurry up because this flank, you know, it's on the verge of, if someone just farts wrong, you know, it could cause a 100 men to break. Um, it's just, it looks like the Teutonic Order is just heavily outnumbering these guys. These halberds are trying to hold against the, the swordsmen of the Teutonic Order. Over on this side, we've got archers now holding this flank. And we have the Teutonic Knights just slicing and smashing their way through the lines thanks to the Grandmaster and the Ritter Brooder, Heavy Shock Cab, is getting behind them. Oh, but there we go. They finally, finally broke the Teutonic Order. And sure enough, he's shifting over his Pavi Spearmen to face the other side of the battlefield. But... It's kind of too late. They need to hurry up and go. And look at the war wagons have been destroyed. They turned back into normal wagons. Uh, but can the Pavi Spears, they need to get up there, honestly. 
They need to charge up there and support this. They're not done yet. Bounce is uh, bounce of power is not looking good for the radical Huzites, where they are uh, starting to really suffer uh, a lot of casualties, take a lot of casualties against these medium bow infantry. The Papal States are just looking really strong, relatively speaking, after defeating the Polish army. Well, pretty much almost all of the Polish army. And it's all going to come down to Bohemia to win this battle. They've got extra reserves. They're now charging them in. Pavi Spearman, but is it going to be enough? They need a miracle here to try to break down this Teutonic Order. If they can kill the general, maybe, cause a chain route. Anything they can do to try to turn this battle around. But it's not looking good. Looking like they're running out of reserves. There's another Pavi Spear unit coming around that did excellent. I mean, 42 kills. Pavis, obviously, they're known for holding their ground. Now we got some swordsmen coming in. The Teutonic Order just seems to have an endless amount of troops. And there's that big break, guys. Unfortunately, Bohemia just... The men have realized that there is no hope and troops are starting to break. Even the Pavi spearmen who charged in are starting to break. And there you go, guys. It's really going to come down. Here's the general. Here's that famous general we're talking about. Here comes a charge. The medium bow infantry. And that's going to be the last of this Han Hon Zika. Zika? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> clearly. Look at the brave bodyguard, though, fighting to the bitter end. I think the general's still alive. The unit is running from the enemy. See, where is he? Where is this general? Oh, he's breaking. It doesn't matter anyways. So really, it's going to come down to this little pocket of troops who are fighting back to back. The macement of Bohemia. Standing with the Pavis, which have now broken. So now it's just the bait, the Macemen. And we got six seconds left in this battle replay. And this is going to be a pretty decisive victory in terms of multiplayer. Um, that was really fun. It was cool to see the war wagons, but it doesn't seem like they did too well. Um, so this was sent in by Cassius. Thank you so much for the battle replay. He played as the Teutonic Order. Um, over here we have Smokey and Lemon, who's playing as Bohemia and Poland. And then we have Lima, who's playing as the Papal States. So the general did a really good job for Bohemia. 206 kills. The war wagons, though, not impressed. Now this is the Kingdom of, of Bohemia, who did a good job with the Pavis. The Pavis held their ground for a good amount of time. Um, but unfortunately, they just couldn't get enough kills. They really just got slaughtered on that left flank against the Teutonic Order. And then on the other side, the Teutonic Order, their cav is just a murdering machine. 267, 304, 218. Uh, their artillery getting 87 kills. Their infantry, a nice spread of kills. Nothing too crazy high, but it's a nice spread. Archers didn't really do that much, um, but that's okay. They went with they went with a lot of skirmishers. These skirmishers did amazing. A lot of them over 100 kills. Uh, but if we can look at the Papal States, they did a good job with their archers. Their cav doing okay. Uh, but their infantry here, this infantry, 235. That was really solid. Really solid on their end. The, the pikes doing pretty good too. And then looking at Lemon, who was Poland. Poland did pretty decent with his skirmishers and his cav. Uh, yeah, the Great Banner of Krakow. Krakow? I never pronounced that right. Uh, but yeah, they did a good job with the Cav. The Great Banner could have done a little bit better. 56, but the 164 is pretty solid. Uh, the infantry just kind of crumbled. Like, these Levy Spearmen he was using just wasn't enough. And then the Heavy Axemen did okay, but this Heavy Axemen got zero kills? How is that even possible? That's a real shame. And Poland just kind of 
He just fell so quickly. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up, guys, for today's battle. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this one. And hopefully we can do some more 1212 AD in the future. I hope, fingers crossed, they fix that bug. Because I will be able to do way more replays in the future. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I uh, appreciate it so much. And I will see you guys next time on the battlefield.